I absolutely love numbers. Now, I know many people don't agree with me on that, at least at the start of this talk, and I'm hoping to change their minds just a little bit by the end of our short time together. With just the little tiniest bit of guidance, I think you'll come around to my way of thinking. And even if I don't get you to fall completely madly in love with numbers, when I'm finished, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to conduct some basic data analysis without worrying about getting it all wrong. There are many reasons, but today I want to focus on the fact that they really do paint a picture, one that can be used to identify problems and run a more efficient and effective accounts payable function. Make sure you stick around until the end when I share how to ensure your data analytics accurately reflects current activities. And the issue is sadly one that few ever think about. Hey guys, I'm Mary Schaefer, founder of AP Now, this place where you go for all the latest business intelligence if you work and manage or have responsibility for the accounts payable and or payment function. This session is brought to you by Oversight, AI in Action. Let's start with a few basic definitions, including one most of you are familiar with. We're going to start by talking about average. Average is the result you get by adding up all the numbers in a list and dividing by the number of entries. It can also be misleading as we're going to discuss in this uh, example that I'm going to give you. And by the way, another term for average is mean. Okay. And with this, I'm just going to uh, present the example and then we'll talk about, we'll bring it back down to um, the world we live in, the accounts payable space and data analytics in a little bit. But right now, simple average, you add up all the, the, the numbers. So in this example that I'm showing on the screen of 15, 13, 3, 2, and 2, you add them all up, it comes to 70, you divide it by 5, and you get 14. So our average of these numbers is 14. That can mean a lot of different things depending upon uh, what we're we're talking about. And so, for example, in this, in this example that I'm showing, I've now added um, average number of invoices handled by a processor. So you can see that there is a wide um, difference anywhere ranging from 2 uh, to 30. Um, so you might automatically say, oh, we want to focus on the person who is um, handling 30 invoices per, per hour. Let's say it was um, not the one who is handling two, maybe. So the one who's handling 30 must be doing a better job. But that may or may not be the case. And the reason for that is, as you know, not all invoices are created equal. Um, a one invoice uh, for example, might have one item on it, another invoice might have 300 items. Think about a hospital who's ordering supplies. So that's why a lot of times in accounts payable, we say don't focus on number of invoices, but perhaps if you want to look at you know productivity in this area, you might focus on a number of line items processed. Because in actuality, in this example, it may be that the person who's processing 30 invoices uh, per hour is processing all invoices that just have one line item on them, and the people who are processing two invoices per hour are those, you know, 500,000, those million dollar invoices that have many line items. So we need to also keep that in mind and make sure we're always comparing. We're looking at a reasonable um, metric for what we're trying to measure. OK, so the median is the next thing. And this is some is what I like to call it the middle number. It's the number where half are larger and half are smaller. And so in our example of um, 50, uh, 33, 3, 2, and 2, our median number would be 3, okay? Um, and sometimes it's useful to uh, focus on this to give you an idea of where you stand. If there's, you know, one super performer or super problem, this will help bring it out. Okay, so now we can see in our data um, we have mean, median, uh, mean and average are the same. We also have the median and the mode. And we need to really start this over. OK. Mode is also a, a, a number that is sometimes calculated. And it, it's the value that appears most frequently in a set of numbers. This can be useful in certain circumstances. For example, if you're looking at types of errors and you're seeing how you know people make so many errors, but you see one particular error is being made over and over again, um, then you might want to investigate that. You might want to see mode is also a, a, a number that is sometimes calculated, and it, it's the value that appears most frequently in a set of numbers. This can be useful in certain circumstances. For example, if you're looking at types of errors and you're seeing how 
you know, people make so many errors, but you see one particular error is being made over and over again, um, then you might want to investigate that. You might want to see if your instructions aren't clear as they should be, or if more training is needed, you know, what's the problem? Why is uh, so many errors focused here? So you can see, um, you know, different things can mean different different um, outcomes will depend upon what you're looking at. Now, before I discussed the often overlooked issues that causes so many headaches for accounts payable and accounting professionals when it comes to data analytics, I'd like to share a brief bit of information about our sponsor, Oversight. Oversight is AI in action. Oversight AI sees everything, ensuring process integrity by identifying mistakes, waste, and fraudulent activity in accounts payable, travel and expense, and purchase card use. Go to oversight.com to find out how, and we also have the link in the description below. Now, the issue that uh, causes problems um, is the issue of outliers. And this is in an observation that lies in an abnormal distance from the rest. So in our sample um, here, the outlier could be, would be that, that 50. What is causing that 50? Now, there's a lot of reasons why... Um, now, there are a lot of reasons. Now, there are a lot of reasons why you might have an outlier. For starters, it might be a data entry problem. Somebody may have data, entered the data incorrectly. They may have put a decimal point in the wrong place. They may have added too many zeros. There's a lot of reasons why it could happen. Um, someone also could have had very easy invoices. For example, if we're talking about number of invoices processed, like we discussed earlier about the invoices with only one line item. Um, also, you may have to look at the composition of your uh, your subjects. You may have one very experienced processor and then four newer ones. You need to take that into consideration. And then the nature of the invoice is handled uh, by a particular person. You all probably have those vendors whose invoices are much more difficult to handle uh, than others. Um, and that's why sometimes um, looking at line items is a little bit better than looking at uh, when we're talking about invoices. So you need to basically take the numbers. I like to say you need to take the numbers in context. Text. Now, you also want to make sure that what you're getting is, um, is actually a problem. So, for example, if we were looking for the number of invoice errors um, and we see, you know, we have our, our 50, our 33, our 3, our 2, and our 2, you might think, well, that 50 is, is terrible and, we, you know, we should take it out and that person, um, we need to do some extra training for that person. But let's think about it for a minute. Let's say that 50, is it 50 um, keying errors per day? Okay, that might be a problem. But if it's 50 keying errors per year, that means the person's making one keying error per week. And you know what? That's fine. We don't have a problem. We don't have to do any um, additional training. So uh, you want to, you, you need to look at the numbers in context and not just automatically assign, say, oh, you know, this one's so, so much worse. We need to um, do something about it because maybe you don't. So you also need to look and say when you're looking at these numbers and you're trying to judge um, the rest of a staff, um, do these outliers really throw the numbers and do maybe we need to take them out. When it comes to outliers, sometimes uh, folks, when they do a lot of data analytical work, they'll automatically take the lowest and the highest and discard them or the two lowest and the two highest and discard them because they can, uh, you know, bias the numbers in one way or another. Now, as we've discussed, outliers can uh, be sometimes be caused by simple keying errors. That's why I advise people to be, I hate to say this, but control freaks when it comes to staff and data entry. Because really, if you can, if you can be, you can get this down with your rigid coding standards, it's your best protection against um, a duplicate or erroneous payment. Um, and I have some real life examples, which I, I can share. Um, offline. This is not something that I normally advocate for, but when it comes to data entry, it's what's called for. In fact, we did a really short video on this topic. It's less than three minutes, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in your description. As always, I appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments, and your subscribes.